Joining us now is former Georgia representative, political strategist, Reverend D. Dawkins Hagler. We love having you on. I get excited when I see your name pop up and I say, oh, they booked through this morning, so we're gonna have a real conversation. Um, and I'm gonna just start with this, Reverend. Where do we go from here when we have mansion and cinema doing what they do, making it clear they're not budging? Um, this, this measure today being taken up in the Senate feels like it's just a show. It's not serious. Um, but when will we have an opportunity to get this done? Well, good morning, Sharon, and I love being here. So let's let's just break this thing down. So we know right now we have two Democratic senators holding the voting bill hostage. We can't expect for the Republicans to do right because they haven't been uh, characters of good faith up until now. Um, they are the reason why uh, this bill had to be introduced in the first place because they're afraid uh, of the changing demographics of this country and power uh, never concedes power, especially those with a racist past. And so here we are today with basically a ceremonial vote that's really not going to go anywhere. But all that being said, we can't give up hope. I mean, uh, the Civil Rights Bill and the Voting Rights Act of 1965, they didn't come overnight. It took time. And so now we have to be in it for the long haul, even though these were battles that were supposedly won um, by the 15th Amendment and then again by the Voting Rights Act. Here we are again in 2022 trying to pass a comprehensive voting bill. And that's just shameful on America. But you know what? This is America and that's part of its past. How much, you know, we had uh, Representative Clyburn, who we love on this program, and I posed the question to him, uh, this is just recently, uh, about how much we should put at the doorstep of the Biden administration in um, their lack, as some would say, of leadership on this issue. It's like an as run type of thing. Many black people feel that's the case. And he said it's not fair. Where do you stand on that? You know what? Um, I want to say this. President Biden is an astute politician. He was in the United States Senate for almost 30 years. He's been the vice president of the United States of America, and he knows how to whip votes and support. So on that note, I think he's almost a day late and a dollar short because he should have called for the filibuster last year when he seen that it was, you know, trying to be derailed across the country. Now, that being said, it's sometimes hard to change the minds and hearts of those who don't have goodwill and intentions for a whole demographic of mm. people. And I know we don't really want to talk about that. We don't really want to deal sometimes with the elephant in the room. But racism is still alive and well, and people still don't uh, see us sometimes as uh, fully human in America. They're still treating us like a three-fifths compromise. And so I just want to say that Biden has got to step up. He's got to get you know, the testicular will to do what's right at this point and in yeah. this season. And he really needs to put the heat on Mansion and on cinema. So let's stay with that. And, and we're watching footage of him uh, with the Vice President Kamala Harris. Many uh, leaders, voting rights activists, skipped his uh, appearance in Atlanta. Didn't want to have anything to do with it. Now, Stacey Abrams said she had a conflict, um, but it's clear her base, the one that she's so successfully energized, likely didn't want her standing next to this president. Not now, because of the reasons you just expressed. What about black energy or the lack thereof leading up to the midterms? They need us. They really do need us. And this is why he's in office right now, because of us. This is why many people in the South who won these positions are there, because of us and all around this country. And so what happens is they take for granted our vote. And I know that I have several friends like Latasha Brown and Cliff Albright over at Black Voters Matter who were very upset mm -hmm. about all the rhetoric that was yes. given. And you know they have that mantra that Black Voters Matter. They do matter, but Black candidates also matter. And everything that we put up is a representation of who and what we are. And we have to stop taking seconds when other demographics are put before us. It's not like it's a competition, but it's also, can you do for us what you've done for others? And and I'm with them. I mean, I didn't go to the event myself because I, I don't want to hear any more rhetoric. I want to see some things happening. Yes, I will continue to support President Biden and Vice President Harris, but at the same time, I am completely appalled that we're dealing with this in 22, 2022, 
uh, situations that I thought my grandmother's generation had already overcome. But if the will is obstruction, as you said, people who don't have good intentions, and there's not much he can do to move people who are really behaving in some devilish ways throughout this country, passing all of these lie-like laws, then what can he really do? And what should we do besides take our ball and go home? How do we make it clear that you better figure this out? How do we do it? So it's going to go two ways. So first of all, we have to make sure that those who we give our vote to appreciate our vote and are going to do the right thing. Then second of all, those who are trying to continue to be obstructionists, we've got to shut it down with our dollars. They may not want to operate in black and white, but they understand green. And I think last year when those boycotts started, we should have stayed on that path. And a lot of people like to say, oh, we have surpassed boycotts and sit-ins and the like. No, we haven't. Clearly we have it because they're still trying to suppress our votes and people understand when you shut things down. And it's just amazing to me how people who had less did more, who would stand outside in the cold or walk and not get on a bus or not eat in certain restaurants. And here we are, yes. we can't even shut it down long enough to make sure that we and the generations that come behind us have the right to vote in a franchisement in this country. This is really a sad state of affairs that we're, that we're in right now. Boy, you make incredible sense there. And, you know, it was only yesterday that Martin Luther King III reminded us we got that federal holiday after Arizona lost the Super Bowl, right? Super Bowl moved out of Arizona. So it can happen. I hear you loud and clear, Reverend D. Dawkins Hagler. We thank you so much. This is why I love having you on the show. Thank you for starting thank your day so with much. us.